Family and friends, welcome once again to another episode of Soul Talk. In this episode, I describe my perspective on how we relate to the animal kingdom and its effects on the human experience and existence. Now, to be clear, the animal kingdom comprises of every other living creature on earth besides human beings. It is my humble belief that the animal kingdom is an extension of the forces of nature that embodies the presence of God on earth in its purest form. Unable to commit sin, they exist purely in the realms of their capabilities and God-given animal instinct. Their purpose and ability and behavior dictated by DNA coding, ultimate natural selection of the best versions of themselves, all designed by our Creator to accentuate human existence through cultivation, nurturing, healing, and companionship. We consume daily either a direct or indirect product of the animal kingdom. Their existence makes all food possible, from pollination with the bees, to the yearly and treacherous upriver salmon migration, the indisputable role of manure for cultivation, or the critical role of microbes in our soil and oceans, just to name a few. Then there's the second by second, round the clock sacrifice of livestock for meat that literally feeds the world. Now, according to Google, that's 310 million tons of meat a year, which breaks down to around 75 pounds of meat per person in one year. Then there's clothing and animal byproducts that have inspired a nation of vegans who still depend on the consistent energy of so many animals for the food, plant-based diet they eat. The point being, our dependency on animals for life goes hand in hand with our own, a fact that most of us take for granted daily. If you believe in creation, it is simpler in understanding the order of these things. However, if you are trying to look at it from a scientific perspective alone, it is my opinion that you miss the biggest lesson it all has to offer. You see, Life is in fact directly dependent on and contingent on the occurrence of death. Whether we eat an animal directly or its corpse rots and fertilizes the soil that we use to cultivate plant food, it is and will forever be the only reason life prospers. It takes a while for you to understand that. To God it doesn't matter what your diet consists of because from his perspective it all recycles, including you. It is the inescapable physical attribute of life. It all has an expiration date. It has to, in order for new life to move forward. Even the stars go through this cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, a law of the cosmos that no scientific discovery can dispute. Can you imagine if every animal that ever was was allowed to live with only the threat of old age for its demise? Even with the idea of contraceptives and abstinence, we still manage to be 7 billion plus and growing. There's an order to this physical universe we live in, and its appetite for death is, is insatiable. It, it, however, doesn't mean we should lose our souls to gluttony. In fact, it is the reason to reflect on the many sacrifices of life and what it affords us. I remember, just like so many of you, being taught to pray over my food before I eat it. The reasons diverse due to culture and religion. However, universally it's about gratitude for the sacrifices that were made to afford them. The blood spilled in the name of of hunger is least thought of at that time due to it being a graphic reminder of how much we actually depend on death, but should always be focal in truly appreciating the meal in front of you. Added to the already precious concept of life and its very humbling reality, Can you imagine if you thought this way before every meal? How much more you would appreciate? As delicious as some animals may taste when cooked, not all are destined for the chopping block. Horses, some fish, cats, and dogs, they round up the top of those that do more for the human experience than any material man-made thing. Adoptive friends with endless, unconditional love we call pets. It is clear that any animal can be adopted as a pet, however, these happen to be most popular in that department. Besides family and friends, our pets fall right in the category 
of most beloved. Because of their innocent, dependable, unconditional love that they reciprocate. Again, God's design is genius in this department because they are essential and in some cases the most crucial listeners in our lives. For example, a dog, I would like to think, is considered man's best friend because of all the confessions of the heart that is reciprocated in most cases with a warm embrace and a heavily salivated kiss across the face. Now, some may bark or jump uncontrollably, all however positively reassuring your emotions without any judgment whatsoever. Some may call it instinctual learned behavior that culminates into some type of snack or meal for the dog with nothing more emotionally attached. However, how do you explain the behaviors of words you talk? For example, my dog is a Jack Russell Terrier, full of character and energy to the point where I have been unsuccessful in teaching him anything. However, every time I feed him, he licks my hand in a manner of such sincere gratitude that you realize how much he appreciates the daily routine. Sincere, unconditional, consistently, consistently grateful. His reaction never fails. It is one of the reasons I believe that animals are most spiritually connected to God, like a newborn baby. Born with an innocence that is pure, honest, and filled with light of life, essence of God. I can't imagine life without them. Yes, some may develop habits that we cannot stand, but they they don't apologize for it because it is sincere. It is truth in its humblest form, an unmistakable, unmistakable part of their nature. And how we treat our pets are a reflection of our own hearts. There are those that treat their pets kindly, and then there are those who don't. Either way, a pet's loyalty to its owner is unwavering. The love is reciprocal, deep in any direction of the spectrum. We love you get love. You hate, you get reciprocated behavior, a reflection of one's soul. I was on tour one time with an acting group when I was a teenager, and I witnessed an amazing thing I would never forget. We stopped for coffee at a, at a gas station that sat near the edge of some woods early one morning. It was the middle of winter, and everything was cold and damp. As we walked into the gas station, I noticed one from our group rear off into the direction of the woods. He was an older guy, tall and simple in character, bald head, large beard that seemed to tell his life story. He walked out to the middle of the clearing in front of the woods, and he stood quietly, his arms extended, facing the woods. He stood there for several minutes, and then suddenly a bird flew out of the woods and landed on his shoulder. At the same time, a pack of squirrels came running towards his feet. Before you can take it all in, he was standing surrounded by animals that all just looked back at him. Most stunningly was a deer that never broke eye contact. I was 16 years old at the time. As odd as and as strange as the experience felt to everyone, I would never forget what he told me when I asked him what should happen. He said, if you take the time to truly see nature, nature will also take the time to see you. With that said, family and friends, I pray you leave this message inspired to appreciate the animal kingdom and all its glory even more. They are living, breathing creatures that share our planet as home, each with a soul. As providers or as company, they are loyal to our existence and divinely proclaimed by our Creator to be that way. They are a blessing an extension of God himself. Yes, even the creepy crawly ones. They all serve a purpose and are placed here to do God's work. Let's remember this every time we eat or interact with our pets. We often say God is love. One of the ways I believe he has expressed his great love is through the existence of the animal kingdom. Stay tuned for my next episode, the last in the series of relationships, our relationship with the planet, our home we call her. Until then, may you have a meaningful and purposeful week. God bless.